Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear's Workshop. Today's video is gonna be a two-parter. We have two different problems. The RV just came back from a rental and the renters had a problem with the vacuum flush system. And it turns out I had someone look at it while they were out on their rental because uh, they were very far from me. It turned out the vacuum flush pump uh, is failing and it can be rebuilt. So we have the RV, it came back, and now that it's back, I've ordered parts for it hoping to replace it today, but we turned on the water and now the, the pump's not working. So in today's video, we're gonna go through the RV pump, we're gonna find out what the problem is, replace it or repair it, whatever we need to do, and then we're gonna make another video for the vacuum flush system to see what the problem might be with that. Hopefully it's a, the, the parts that I bought are gonna fix it. So let's take a look. Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking a look at the water pump. So I'll tell you right now, I know that the water pump light comes on. When I flip the switch, it comes on. So it looks like there's power going to the water pump. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna test the, uh, the power, see if the water pump's getting power. So let's go take a look at that. So here's our water pump. Uh, this is the original water pump that came in here, I'm assuming. Um, it's got a manufacture date and it's from 2012. So is the RV, so this is obviously the original. Here's the power, there's only two wires going to it. You can see that we have two water lines coming into this and we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the power. We've got our voltmeter right here and we're gonna check for our power. So we should have power coming out of here, so let's stick our prongs in there and uh, put that up so we can see it and we got 12.77 volts so we know our pumps getting power so our, our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this pump pull this out and we're going to probably take off the top make sure nothing's clogging it and we're going to maybe hook up a battery to it and see if we can get it to run outside of the trailer there could be something clogging a line somewhere. It's always possible. Um, I've turned this valve. This is a drain valve right here. And I've taken this off and no water's come out. Pump is on right now, or it should be on. You saw the power, but nothing's coming out. And this is turned to the on position. This is just a quarter turn valve. Or if it's in line, that means it's open. So point the valve to where, where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna replace this. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to get a screwdriver. We've got four Phillips screws, two on each side. We're going to disconnect that. We're going to disconnect this on top. Probably need a wrench for it. Maybe, maybe not. But this is one thing we can do before we disconnect everything. Let's check to see if water is coming out of this. I'm actually not even sure which is the in and which is the out. But we're going to disconnect this and see what happens. No water. Let's plug this back in. Still nothing. I'm gonna have to reach in there a little further. Got some water coming out of this now. And right on the voltmeter. Okay, got our water pump disconnected. We are going to go take off this top, see what we can figure out. Maybe there's something just caught in there. Maybe it's a bad diaphragm, maybe, I don't even know what's inside, I don't even know if there's diaphragms in it. But we're gonna pull it apart, take a look at it, and if we have to, we will replace it. But it comes out fairly easy for me, because I was lucky, because mine's in an easy spot to get to. I know that a lot of, a lot of RVs, these things are not easy to get to. Sometimes they're hidden away under cabinets or things like that. But let's go into the shop. Let's take a look. Okay, I've never taken one of these apart. I don't know what I'm going to find. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow some air through it. 
All right, we're just going to blow air through this hole. I really don't know why I'm going to do it, but... Okay, we've got some air coming out. We're going to take off. There's lots of screws on top. There's a couple holding the the power right here. And then there's nine around the base. That's the ones that we're going to take off because that way we can separate this from the motor and we can see what, what we might be looking at. Maybe. Maybe not. This one broke. That's not good. Okay. A lot of dirt in here. There's one of our broken screws. This piece isn't locked up. This piece is still spinning. Oh, it spins kind of odd. The motor turns. But this is spinning. I don't know if you can see this. It's not staying centered. It's almost like it's off. Let's keep taking things off and see what happens. Well, it doesn't look odd at all. See if we can pull this apart. Thing is with diaphragms, they could look perfectly fine. Doesn't mean that they are. That piece right down there was stuck. See how it moves now? When I first pressed it, it wasn't moving. That's going to prevent this from working. Let's get some power to the motor and make sure that the motor still works. And I got to rig something up. Got a little 12 volt battery here that we use in our sprayers. I'm going to figure out a way to get some wires from one to the other. It's going to take me a moment. We're just going to give a little bit of power and see if anything happens. Well, we're going to try to. Kind of hard to get it, get this tiny little thing in a tiny little hole. Make whatever comment you want about that. Motor's working. Okay. Motor test out. That's good. So. I'm thinking that it was this piece right here. I got a piece of dirt in it or something. So we're going to take this off real quick and just clean out anything that might be in there. So, so the problem hopefully doesn't come back. It is pretty dirty in there. My hands were clean before I started this. So there's been a decent amount of dirt in here. So this looks like another little diaphragm. And uh, I assume it can wear down. And a little bit of light on that. Let's pull this completely off. I'm wondering if there's a solenoid in here too. It's 
looks like it could be a little solenoid. And if this has gone bad, right here, that's a little solenoid. So we're going to test the power on this too, make sure it pops like it's supposed to. See how there's additional wires going up to here? Because this, this can stop. If a solenoid doesn't open up all the way, or it's stuck closed, then you're going to have a problem with the with this. So let's I'm going to get a little power to this. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to look for some sort of movement or a click from this solenoid right here. After we apply power, the motor is also going to spin. So we've got to look for both at the same time. Well, I didn't see anything happening with this. Could be a bad one, or maybe I just can't see it. But it looks like we've got it on jammed up, so let's start putting it back together and see if we can pump water through it. Now we've got everything back together, we're going to again apply power to it and see what happens. See if we're still working. Hey, we're still working. Okay, so we know the motor's now working. We're going to go ahead, bring it over to the RV. We're going to plug it in the RV before we put in the screws. Make sure it's still working. Then we're going to put the screws in and the hose lines and then see if we get water again. Let's see if this fixed up. Okay, I'm going to plug it back in. Power is still on, so it should just come right on, in theory. That's working. We heard it running. Let's get it all plugged back in, screwed back in, and we'll see if we get water from the faucet. Before I put the second line in, I'm going to plug it back in and see if it starts pumping. I'll probably get wet. Nothing yet. I'm gonna just gonna reconnect it. Start pushing the air out. It's gonna compress it. There's no open lines. So the air is gonna get compressed in the lines. Once I make it tight enough. Alright, let's go inside. Open up a line, see if water starts coming out. Okay, we're gonna go try and see if something comes out now. Let's see if it maintains pressure. That doesn't look all that positive. It appears that's the water that we put in the line. Okay, found the problem. The pump's leaking still. It's leaking from that seam where I put those screws in. I'm going to see if I can get them a little tighter. Okay, so the water pump is now working. The only problem that we're having is that when we took off these screws, the insides of two of them broke off, and then the third one is on free spin. If I go to tighten it, it just keeps tightening. So this one broke off, this one's on free spin. So what's happening is, is when the water pump is mounted, it's, gonna, it's leaking from the side, it's not staying together. So we're going to order another one. So when we come back to this video, we'll have a brand new water pump and we'll just go ahead and replace it and see where we're at from there. Okay, um, it's been a couple of days uh, since you saw me three or four seconds ago. So we got the pump running, as you saw, by knocking that black piece up, the little round cylinder that was just jammed, probably dirt or something like that. But that's a fix for these pumps. If you can't replace it, if you're out somewhere and you can't do anything. Problem that I had was these screws, two of them broke inside the base of the water pump and I was unable to tighten this back together. Now, if you wanted to try and do that, you can always 
drill out the broken screws and then put a screw with a nut on the other side and that would probably work as opposed to doing what we did. I just went and bought a new water pump. I don't want to take any chances. I use this on a rental, so I prefer for it to be working. So it's a seven year old pump, the RV is seven years old. So I got a new pump. I got it, I hate to say it, but I got it at Camping World because Amazon shipping time was a little long. I just wanted to get this taken care of. And by the way, Camping World is now Gander or Grander or something like that. They're trying to make themselves look like a outfitting place. They sell guns and stuff now. I'm trying to be like a Bass Pro Shops, but I don't think they're going to get to that level. So anyway, we've got a brand new SureFlow pump. It's the same, exact same pump. Uh, it is brand new. It was about 80 some odd dollars. You can get them on Amazon. They're cheaper on Amazon if you got a little bit more, more time to, to wait for it. Funny thing is, is that I looked online, Camping World had it, I called them, they said they had it. It was $81 online. And I go in there and it says that the price is $129 reduced to $99. So I had to ask them about it. And they said, oh, just show the online price to the cashier and she'll adjust it. What a pain in the butt. Why can't you just have the same prices? Make you jump through hurdles or put people in a situation where they didn't realize it and they end up paying the wrong amount. So the difference on the pumps, not much, they, they are the same pumps, but we've got to take this piece off right here and then just, uh, just move this over to here. And I also have to do the wires. The wires are not uh, into, in a harness. So I will have to take this piece off and wire this in. I'm probably just going to do some some wire nuts as opposed to cutting into the harness because this is probably already crimped down and then this will uh, plug and play fairly easy but that's all that needs to be done I'm not happy about the wiring harness not being on it but I suppose they're different on different vehicles so anyway that's what we're going to do next and then we're going to have this ready to put, be put back in There wasn't any plumbing tape on this, but probably doesn't need it, but I'm going to put some on just because I just want to minimize the possibility of leaks and I'm not going to go wrong by having it on there. Sorry about the chicken. She uh, got a little mad that I went over to her egg laying spot. I'm a little mad that her egg laying spot's inside my shop, but you know, what are you going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put, it, put the water pump back in. I'm not going to show you how I do it again because I've already shown you several times so I'm gonna go put it in and then I'll be right back to you okay here's our test let's see if we got some uh, water going now well, that came right out let's see if it keeps maintaining the pressure looks good okay we've gone ahead and fixed the water pump by replacing it but I hope this video helped you because it showed you a way to actually fix the pump without having to replace it as long as you don't break those screws off. So I hope this was informative to show you how to replace it, how to take it out, put it in, and possibly repair it without replacing it. So if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and then hit the subscribe button so you can see more content. Our next video coming out is going to be replacing the uh, some of the internal parts on a vacuum flush vacuum pump which is why we had to replace this was so that we get to the next thing that we need to fix so stay tuned thanks for watching